The author, Donna Tartt, is beloved in the literary world, but she remains a mystery to many of her fans. She completes one novel every decade. Her previous work includes The Secret History and then The Little Friend. We spoke with her for her only American television interview since the release of her newest novel. It has just been named Amazon's Best Book of the Year. The journey that I want to take the reader on always is the journey that I loved most when I was reading as a child. Just this galloping, gleeful, you don't know what's going to happen next. At age 49, author Donna Tart is one of the greatest American novelists of the past half century. Her third and latest novel is The Goldfinch, an epic literary journey inspired by a painting with the same name. Why this painting? Well, look at it. We brought Tart to New York City's Frick Collection to see her inspiration firsthand. This is not only the title of the book, but I mean, it becomes central. It's the guiding spirit the of the book. It's the guiding spirit of the book. And Fabrizius himself is a bit of a ghost throughout the book. Along with most of his key works, the Dutch realist Carl Fabricius was killed in a massive gunpowder explosion, but the goldfinch survived. That series of events drives both Tart's narrative and purpose. One of the characters said you can see the doubleness in the painting. What does that mean? The doubleness means that you can see the painter's hand. You can see the painter's brush strokes. It's a wonderful illusion, but yet if you get close enough, it falls apart into brush strokes. And I think all great, truly great art has that doubleness. Donna Tartt has known what makes great art from a young age. She was 28 when she published her first novel, The Secret History. It instantly became an international sensation, gaining an almost cult-like following. When it exploded onto the scene, what was that like for you? It was very disorienting because I wasn't expecting it at all to write something that long in solitude, having you have to understand when you're a writer, there's no one coming in at the end of the day saying, wow, that's a great passage you just yeah. wrote. Boy, that's wonderful. Yeah. I, so I didn't really know how people were going to respond to it. And I was the only disappointment fans had was that they had to wait a decade for her next book, The Little Friend. So you have three novels, and how many years invested in three novels? Well, so it's been 30 years. They've been a decade each. How many books can you write? I guess not many if I keep going well, at this devastatingly would be good, slow pace. Five would be good. I'd be yeah. happy with I mean, five. Can you become Smooth prolific sailing. and get faster with effort? Well, you know, I've, I've tried to write faster, and I don't really enjoy it. I don't enjoy yeah. the process of doing that. I've, I, I've tried to speed up. I thought, well, I'll try to write. I made a, it was a mistake. I thought, well, I'll try to write a book in a year. And I just didn't enjoy it at all. It wasn't fun for me. And yeah. it, no fun for the writer, no fun for the reader. Although tedious, her process works. At 800 pages, The Goldfinch has been called a giant masterpiece that is heartrending and irresistibly wicked. But it was Stephen King who may have given the author her highest praise when he likened her work to her favorite author, Charles Dickens. Like Dickens, Tart's novels go far beyond just the thrill of the narrative. So what questions are you grappling with here. What is love? What else? Uh, what is love? What is the good life? Yeah. What do you mean by that, the good life? And why is that interesting for you? Well, the idea is that, well, there's several, there are many definitions of the good life. Is the good life to be happy oneself? Is it personal happiness? Yeah. Is it making other people happy at the expense of one's own happiness? What, what is it for any of us? We all have to work this out on our you? own. For me, for me, lo well, I think the two great salvations, love and work, those are... You, yeah, those you are, got it. Yeah, that's <laughs> you can get love and work. Life will be very if good If love to and you. work, then yeah. everything else I would only add place. health to that. If you have love and work and good health. I'm such a huge At man. barely five feet tall, the Mississippi native seems to move through life on her own terms. She I, is I at once delightfully peculiar and mysterious. Yeah. Do you like the mystery about you? What's important for me as a writer really is solitude. It's not so much reclusiveness as, as just a need to be alone when I work. When I am working, I am, 
I do need need to spend a lot of time alone. A life spent at one's desk is a life alone. And she wouldn't have it any other way. Has the writer's life lived up to your hopes, dreams, expectations? To my wildest dreams. Really? Yes. More, bigger, larger, finer than you dreamed? Yes. Yeah. And so what does that mean? How, what is the writer's life that is so satisfying for you? Well, to be able to daydream all day, to be, to be able to, writing a book is one level deeper than reading a book. As much fun as it is to read a book, writing a book is one level deeper than that. So it's, it's really fun. It's hard at times, it's hard going, but when it's, when it's good and when it's going well, there's nothing like it. Well, there it is, uh, Amazon's Book of the Year. Mm. A remarkable young woman who lives on a farm in Virginia and uh, an old farmhouse that she found. Uh, there's mystery, there's intrigue, uh, and it was there's a nice every 10 years a book. The two of you, because she so rarely gives interviews, it was good to see mm -hmm. yeah. back and forth between the two of yeah, you. Like Very nice. Yeah. I'm looking forward to reading the book, all yeah. 800 pages. <laughs> I'm going to have to do it on vacation. <laughs>